Metachromatic Leukodystrophy, Wikipedia article audio. Metachromatic leukodystrophy is a lysosomal storage disease which is commonly listed in the family of leukodystrophies as well as among the sphingolipidoses as it affects the metabolism of sphingolipids. Leukodystrophies affect the growth and slash or development of myelin, the fatty covering which acts as an insulator around nerve fibers throughout the central and peripheral nervous systems. MLD involves cerebroside sulfate accumulation. Metachromatic leukodystrophy, like most enzyme deficiencies, has an autosomal recessive inheritance pattern. Signs and Symptoms Causes Genetics Diagnosis Treatment Epidemiology Research Bone marrow and stem cell transplant therapies Gene therapy Enzyme replacement therapy Substrate reduction therapy Natural history studies Like many other genetic disorders that affect lipid metabolism, there are several forms of MLD which are late infantile, juvenile, and adult. Palliative care can help with many of the symptoms and usually improves quality of life and longevity. Carriers have low enzyme levels compared to their family population but even low enzyme levels are adequate to process the body's sulfatide. MLD is directly caused by a deficiency of the enzyme aryl sulfatase A and is characterized by enzyme activity in leukocytes that is less than 10% of normal controls. However, a SA of the ARSA enzyme activity alone is not sufficient for diagnosis. ARSA pseudodeficiency, which is characterized by enzyme activity that is 520% of normal controls does not cause MLD. Without this enzyme, sulfadids build up in many tissues of the body, eventually destroying the myelin sheath of the nervous system. The myelin sheath is a fatty covering that protects nerve fibers. Without it, the nerves in the brain and the peripheral nerves which control among other things the muscles related to mobility, cease to function properly. Aryl sulfatase A is activated by saposin B, a non-enzymatic proteinaceous cofactor. When the aryl sulfatase A enzyme level is normal but the sulfadids are still high meaning that they are not being broken down because the enzyme is not activated the resulting disease is saposin B deficiency which presents similar to MLD. Saposin B deficiency is very rare, much more rare than traditional MLD. The enzyme that is present is not enabled to a normal level of efficiency and can't break down the sulfadids which results in all of the same MLD symptoms and progression. A recent study contended sulfatide is not completely responsible for MLD because it is non-toxic. It has been suggested lysosulfatid, sulfatide which has had its acyl group removed, plays a role because of its cytotoxic properties in vitro. MLD has an autosomal recessive inheritance pattern. The inheritance probabilities per birth are as follows. In addition to these frequencies there is a pseudodeficiency that affects 7-15% of the population. People with the pseudo-deficiency do not have any MLD problems unless they also have affected status. With the current diagnostic tests, pseudo-deficiency reports as low enzyme levels but sulfatide is processed normally so MLD symptoms do not exist. This phenomenon wreaks havoc with traditional approaches to newborn screening so new screening methods are being developed. For further information, see Recessive Gene and Dominance Relationship. Also, consult the MLD Genetics page at MLD Foundation. Clinical examination and MRI are often the first steps in a MLD diagnosis. 
MRI can be indicative of MLD, but is not adequate as a confirming test. An ARSAA enzyme-level blood test with a confirming urinary sulfatide test is the best biochemical test for MLD. The confirming urinary sulfatide is important to distinguish between MLD and pseudo-MLD blood results. Genomic sequencing may also confirm MLD, however, there are likely more mutations than the over 200 already known to cause MLD that are not yet ascribed to MLD that cause MLD so in those cases a biochemical test is still warranted. For further information, see the MLD testing page at MLD Foundation. There is currently no therapy or cure for MLD in late infantile patients displaying symptoms, or for juvenile and adult onset with advanced symptoms. These patients typically receive clinical treatment focused on pain and symptom management. Pre-symptomatic late infantile MLD patients, as well as those with juvenile or adult MLD that are either pre-symptomatic or displaying mild symptoms, can consider bone marrow transplantation, which may slow down progression of the disease in the central nervous system. However, results in the peripheral nervous system have been less dramatic, and the long-term results of these therapies have been mixed. Recent success has involved stem cells being taken from the bone marrow of children with the disorder and infecting the cells with a retrovirus replacing the stem cell's mutated gene with the repaired gene before re-injecting it back into the patient where they multiplied. The children by the age of five were all in good condition and going to kindergarten when normally by this age, children with the disease cannot even speak. Several therapy options are currently being investigated using clinical trials primarily in late infantile patients. These therapies include gene therapy, enzyme replacement therapy, substrate reduction therapy, and potentially enzyme enhancement therapy. A team of international researchers and foundations gathered in 2008 to form an international MLD registry to create and manage a shared repository of knowledge, including the natural history of MLD. This consortium consisted of scientific, academic and industry resources. This registry never became operational. The incidence of metachromatic leukodystrophy is estimated to occur in 1 in 40,000 to 1 in 160,000 individuals worldwide. There is a much higher incidence in certain genetically isolated populations such as 1 in 75 in Habanites, 1 in 2,500 in the western portion of the Navajo Nation, and 1 in 8,000 among Arab groups in Israel. As an autosomal recessive disease, 1 in 40,000 equates to a 1 in 100 carrier frequency in the general population. There are an estimated 3,600 MLD births per year with 1,900 alive in the U.S., 3,100 in Europe, and 49,000 alive worldwide with MLD. MLD is considered a rare disease in the U.S. and other countries. Two different approaches to gene therapy are currently being researched for MLD. More information here. Research and clinical trial updates provided by MLD Foundation In the late infantile form, which is the most common form of MLD, affected children begin having difficulty walking after the first year of life, usually at 15-24 months. Symptoms include muscle wasting and weakness, muscle rigidity, developmental delays, progressive loss of vision leading to blindness, convulsions, impaired swallowing, paralysis, and dementia. Children may become comatose. Untreated, most children with this form of MLD die by age 5, often much sooner, 
children with the juvenile form of MLD usually begin with impaired school performance, mental deterioration, and dementia and then develop symptoms similar to the late infantile form but with slower progression. Age of death is variable, but normally within 10 to 15 years of symptom onset although some patients can live for several decades after onset. The adult form commonly begins after age 16 often with an onset in the fourth or fifth decade of life and presents as a psychiatric disorder or progressive dementia. Adult onset MLD usually progresses more slowly than the late infantile and juvenile forms, with a protracted course of a decade or more. If both parents are carriers, 25% children will have the disease. 50% children will be carriers, but unaffected, 25% children will be free of MLD unaffected child that is not a carrier. Gene therapy with an autologous stem cell transplant Italian researchers at the San Raffaele Telethon Institute tested a novel approach combining gene therapy with a stem cell transplant. Recruiting for the Phase I-2 clinical trial formally started on March 24, 2010 after approval from the Italian authorities. Recruiting the initial cohort of eight patients was completed in mid-March 2013. The trial was to test the efficacy and safety of autologous hematopoietic stem cell transplantation after genetic modification to deliver a supertherapeutic ARSA enzyme to the nervous system by the root of the blood cells. Using the patient's own stem cells with genetic correction should reduce or eliminate the complications of graft-versus-host disease and provide a long-term solution to proper ARSA expression in MLD patients. Bench and animal tests showed positive results. The researchers published two-year outcomes for the first three patients in July 2013. Results were described as promising. The Phase I-2 clinical trial is complete. No additional patients are being recruited while the data is analyzed and work progresses to improve the manufacturability and repeatable of the technology while an expansion to other geographies to increase access is being considered. Recruiting was completed for the 20-patient cohort in April 2015 which includes an expansion in December 2014 to add six additional patients. Inclusion criteria are pre-symptomatic late infantiles and both pre- and early symptomatic juveniles. See details on inclusion criteria and the trial protocol here. The trial was at a single center at the San Raffaele Institute in Milan, Italy. All costs were to be paid by the researchers. This was a three-year study. In March 2013, the last of the eight primary trial patients started therapy. The trial had several compassionate access patients and ultimately was expanded to 20 patients. In late 2013 GSK exercised its option for the San Rafael gene therapy technology and is working with the Milan investigators to prepare for the next phase of study. Shire, with headquarters in Switzerland and a major research center in Lexington, MA, is developing and studying their intrathecal shop 611 ERT, clinical trial, recruiting for the clinical trial started January, 2012 and was fully recruited by mid-2014, a fourth cohort was recruited during the first half of 2016. This cohort is fully populated and no new patients are being recruited. Data from this cohort will be gathered by late 2016 with another three six months of outcome analysis expected before a decision is made on what the next drug development and trial plans will be. Phase I-2 data is scheduled to be presented in February 2017 at the LDN-World Conference. Early results showed the drug was well tolerated at all doses and the 100 mg dose showed the slowest decline in GMFM88 scores over the trial period.
Data continues to be studied. Trial centers. Trial centers were opened in Europe, South America, and Australia. Patients were successfully recruited in all trial centers. A natural history study has been underway in Pittsburgh, PA since November 2012. Europeusk Verenigung gegen Leukodystrophien